Schofield was right. Read the signs. All the elements are in place for the tribulation to begin. How could people question the accuracy of dispensationalism when Israel became a nation in 1948? Let's just follow Schofield's script to the end of the world. I had better get my Sunday go to meeting clothes ready because the rapture could be any moment. Wow, Schofield's script is like reading the headlines on the newspapers. Boy, this prophecy thing sure is good. Sometimes, if a thing looks too good, it just might be. That old axiom of buyer beware might fit the next phase of dispensational activity. The 1960s saw a massive increase in mass media communications. Telecommunication satellites orbited the earth and dispensationalism had new avenues to distribute their message. Christian publishing houses cranked out prophecy books right and left. Hollywood type movies such as The Rapture and A Thief in the Night were distributed to churches around America. Bumper stickers could be seen that reverberated with futurist premillennialism with phrases such as, beam me up Jesus. Everywhere you went, the Protestant church was abuzz with prophecy excitement. The television airwaves were filled with premillennial hype, nearly Every major televangelist supported the dispensationalist position. Preachers like Jerry Farwell, Jimmy Swaggart, Pat Robertson, Jim Baker, and Kenneth Copeland heralded premillennial excitement. Christian TV was awash with dispensational speculation. Probably the two greatest prophecy authors from these decades were Hal Lindsey and Tim LaHaye. Hal Lindsey exploded on the dispensationalist scene with his highly successful book called The Late Great Planet Earth that sold over 25 million copies. Other books written by Hal Lindsey were Satan is Alive and Well on Planet Earth and the 1980s Countdown to Armageddon. Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins took the prophecy market by storm when they co-authored a fictional portrayal of the last days in their enormously successful 16-volume Left Behind series that sold over 65 million copies. Mass marketing strategies of televangelism and the books coming out of classic dispensationalist schools like Dallas Theological Seminary were highly successful. These efforts caused Schofield's dispensational script to jump out of evangelical Protestantism into the common marketplace of America. During these decades, the fear of nuclear annihilation and Armageddon were everywhere. You would be hard pressed to find a person who did not have a basic understanding of dispensationalist thinking. Ronald Reagan inflamed apocalyptic hysteria when he came to the White House because he brought with him his deeply ingrained love for God and his premillennial views on Bible prophecy. It is not well known, but Ronald Reagan when he was governor of the state of California, participated in group Bible study. One of the theologians who participated with Ronald Reagan was the Reverend Louis P. Sheldon, founder of Traditional Values Coalition in Orange County, California. Governor Reagan often used this venue to vocalize his love for Bible prophecy. One of his favorite books was 
The Late Great Planet Earth, written by Hal Lindsey. When Governor Reagan became President Reagan, his dispensational views followed him to the White House. While President, Ronald Reagan permitted Jerry Farwell to attend National Security Council briefings, and Hal Lindsey met with Pentagon strategists to discuss nuclear war with the Soviet Union. Some historians believe that the writings of Hal Lindsey motivated President Reagan to view the Soviet Union as the horrid, evil empire. On several occasions during the presidency of Ronald Reagan, he referred to the Soviet Union as the evil empire in his speeches. Moscow responded to these constant assertions by President Reagan by referring to him as a lunatic anti-communist who had his finger on a nuclear button. It is entirely possible that Ronald Reagan's evil empire viewpoint motivated Mikhail Gorbachev to pursue glasnost reforms with the United States. By 1989, the collapse of the Soviet Union could not be ignored. The Berlin Wall came crashing down. Hal Lindsey's Gog of Magog collapsed under constant internal struggles for freedom. Dispensationalism now lost one of their key elements of Bible prophecy. What would they do now? The answer was simple. Just reinvent the identity of Gog of Magog. Watch out for the Islamic Northern Hordes. The 1980s were awash with pre-millennial excitement and prophecy watchers were giddy with anticipation. It wasn't long before dispensational writers fell into the same date-setting trap that frustrated historic premillennialism of England and colonial America, especially William Miller and his 1844 date-setting fiasco. Hal Lindsey, in his book, The Late Great Planet Earth, projected that the rapture could occur in 1988, and he based his projection on Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 through 34. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Hal Lindsey equated the fig tree symbol in Matthew's Gospel to the restoration of the nation of Israel in 1948. He said, When the Jewish people, after nearly 2,000 years of exile, under relentless persecution, became a nation again on May 14th of 1948, the fig tree put forth its first leaves. Hal Lindsey assured his readers that the generation that sees the restoration of Israel would not pass away until all Bible prophecy is fulfilled. Lindsey calculated that one biblical generation equaled 40 years based on the wilderness wandering of the children of Israel in the Old Testament. Therefore, by adding 40 years to 1948, he concluded that 1988 would be the great year of prophecy completion. 1988 came and went with nothing happening, no rapture. Hal Lindsey went silent for a few years, but eventually he retracted his initial prediction by saying he only suggested the year 1988. Later, Hal Lindsey, in his book Planet Earth 2000 AD, wavered on his initial interpretation of the fig tree symbol 
by moving the starting event of the last generation from the restoration of Israel in 1948 to the recapturing of Jerusalem in 1967. Should this be the case, then 2007 has passed and still no rapture. He also wavered on his definition of a biblical generation. It could be as long as 100 years. What next, Hal Lindsey? Hal Lindsey was not the only prophecy teacher who got caught in the date-setting trap. Grant Jeffrey in Armageddon, appointment with destiny, could not see the world going beyond the year 2000. Chuck Smith, pastor of Calvary Chapel in Southern California, in his book, Future Survival, projected that the church would be raptured before 1981. He is now a repentant date setter who believes that date setting is wrong. Jack Van Impey, the self-proclaimed walking Bible, in 1975 insisted that the Soviet flag would fly over Independence Hall in Philadelphia by 1976. He has made so many predictions that they are hard to categorize. His most recent prediction is that the rapture and the tribulation would come to the earth in 2012, jumping on the Mayan calendar bandwagon. Probably the most famous date setter was Edgar Wisenot in his book, 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Be in 1988. He insisted that the date for the rapture would be between September 11th and 13th of 1988, based on the Jewish Feast of Trumpets. When Wisenot was challenged by theologians that no man knows the day or the hour of the second coming, he sidestepped their questioning by saying that this does not preclude or prevent the faithful from knowing the year, the month, and the week of the Lord's return. When challenged, Wisenot split hairs over Bible nuances. He found a loophole. Another self-professing Bible Answer Man is Harold Camping, who runs the Family Radio Network. He boldly predicted that the rapture will occur on May 21st of 2011. He bases his prediction on an arcane mathematical formula using scriptural numerology. This is not his first prediction. On September 6th of 1994, camping and dozens of his believers gathered inside Alameda's Veteran Memorial Building to conduct a rapture watch. Parents dressed their children in their finest clothes and stood holding open Bibles toward heaven. They spent the day anxious for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We all know that the world did not end in 1994. Camping admitted that he made a mathematical error, and he spent the next decade reworking his calculations. We are now at 2011. What will happen should his second rapture watch fail? Who knows? But Camping's predictions smack of the great disappointment in the 1840s caused by the rash predictions of William Miller. The list goes on and on. Salem Kerbin, Jack Hagee, Charles Taylor, and others all came dangerously close to the date-setting trap. <laughs>